Hey everyone, so <laughs> I was gonna build some squixels today. Got my paste out, left it out last night to get to room temperature. Got my panels out and um, well, it's four degrees right now. So a little bit too cold to be manufacturing and I might as well have just left the paste out anyway. It's colder than my fridge is, I think. So I don't know how I'm gonna uh, get this warm. I might have to take it upstairs. Oh, it's cold. Yeah, hopefully it'll warm up a bit later in the day. I'll put the heating on here and try to warm up downstairs. And then I will get into manufacturing some of these. There's a spritzel panel. About to go into the stencil printer. Now here's one already here. Hard to see with all the reflection and the noise, the vacuum, the uh, pasty paste. Come on. Might get stuck on the way out. Yep. I uh, accidentally nudged the uh, conveyor this morning when I wasn't paying attention and moved it. I have to realign it, but I'll do it later. Let's just get this out of the way. Let's have a look at this paste. Wow. That is magical. Okay. Let's pick and place it. Let's go. It's uh, doing its production checking. It's going to complain about my connector. Maybe, or maybe it won't. Yep. So it doesn't like the fact that I'm using such a wide feeder on the side here. It's a 44 millimeter feeder for the connectors and it's not the ideal place for it. It'll work, it works fine. It's just not recommended, so it gives me a warning. It's a W for a warning. I'm gonna ignore it, because it works fine. And here we go. Okay, so we board in. Visuals, grab some nozzles, and that goes. It's only two boards per panel, and 256 parts in total. And kind of spread all over the machine. Very unoptimized pick sequence. Well, it's optimized as it can be, but in terms of the positions, I don't move feeders around. So it does more travel, it takes longer, but I don't make mistakes where I put the wrong feeders in the wrong spot. Now it's going to grab some new nozzles. That slow move there is with the connector grabs it. I've got it moving slowly because it's really wide. Wide, thin and narrow. And the faster it moves, the more chance it's going to shift. Another nozzle change. Just in time for the uh, compressor to kick in. And there is the panel. Finished panel. And here it is here. You can see it a bit better. You can see that the connectors are really wide and narrow and they're on a slight angle. I need to nudge those. The connectors come with the clamp open. 
which means I can't use the full width of the connector to grab it. I have to grab it on the, near the edge, away from where the connector, the clamp is open. So it doesn't get to hold it quite as well as I'd hope. But quick nudge with the tweezers and it's fine. And that is how the squixel is made. The squixel sausage. Don't eat it. Okay, so the connector's been nudged. And now it's going into the oven. Unfortunately, it's not going to continue by itself because of these gaps I put the routing. The sensor is right there. Whoops, so the sensor thinks there's no board there because of the routing edge. So I just need to give it a move along. And there it goes. It's gonna stop again. It's gonna push it all the way through. And off it goes in the oven. And next time I won't route it quite the same way when I get the panels remade on my next order. No big deal, I can just push it through myself, but it was a, a bit of a oversight. And I can't really move this um, because then it'll be in the wrong spot for some other boards. So that is reflowing and there is one in here already. Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. You might be able to see it. Maybe we'll wait for it to come out. So obviously this Quixel is not a high volume product. I'm not shipping thousands of them or even hundreds of them. And so there's no need for me to do complex panels where I've got more than two on a panel. By doing two on a panel the way I've done it here, it means that I can use the same width as I do with 90% of my panels. And though I could have made it longer and put three on there, the wider you make it, the more chance there are going to be paste discrepancies across the width of the stencil. So it's easier to keep it two at a time. I can just keep feeding PCBs through. Here we go. And there we have a reflowed switchable panel, first on the run today. Well, the parts won't fall off. They're all soldered on. God, that would have been embarrassing. Nope, looks good to me. Let's keep going. Well, that's a pretty good production run. What do you reckon? It's a good manufacturing day. It's a few squixels there. Oh wait, you think that's all I did today? No, 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 no. I uh, also did these. Just a few Reflow Master Pros as well, but it's the Squixel that I've been asked about. People wanting to know how they're made, and so I thought I'd show you what it looks like on the line. There's now still separation and some through hole soldering and testing, and then the rest of the assembly, but that is for another time. By the way, if you don't know what Squixel is, check out my website or stay tuned. I will have a Squixel intro video soon. Happy Squixeling everyone. Catch you later, bye.